Hey everyone, Keith McGinnis here with KCDC Designs. You're about to see how I created this beautiful finish using stone coat countertop epoxy and spray paints. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. So I started off this project using 3 quarter MDF. I put a rock edge on the front of the face. I also contoured the backsplash, put a rock edge on it. I ground it out, put some Bondo on there, and then painted it with stone coats uh, black undercoat paint. So prior to adding the clear coat, I did fog the board and I fogged the edges with champagne bronze, oil rubbed bronze, uh, metallic aluminum, just a little bit of that, and then also some hammered black. Uh, it really adds a lot of depth and it also is uh, really important for your edges and especially rock edges to add some more depth and to provide more color. So I'm getting the clear coat uh, poured out, trolled out, and then I use my hand opposed to chopping with a brush. Make sure that I've got nice even coverage, get my trowel marks out, and make sure that I'm getting my rock edge uh, fully coated. So as I'm adding the color, I get a nice even flow. Uh, I am going to be using the chambers effect. Uh, what I like to do is I like to pour down um, a couple veins. And so with the veins, I'm going to be using white metallic, and then also um, I'm using white pearl from Just Resin. And this is going to be, those white veins are going to be an undertone that is going to peek through, if you will, uh, through the colors that I add. It adds another dimension, adds a little bit more depth, and now let's add some color. So now as I begin to add some color, the spray paints I'm going to use, with this technique, the hammered spray paints work very, very well because of the propellant that's uh, in the cans and then also how it reacts with the resin. Um, I'm going to be using a hammered black. I'm using oil rubbed bronze, hammered chestnut, and then I'm also going to use uh, Rust-Oleum's Gloss Khaki. Now granted, that's not a hammered paint but I have found that the combination of using that still provides some just outstanding effects. And that's what I just sprayed on there with some of the khaki. So this technique, what's important about it is you're going to be adding a lot more spray paint than you would think that you need to. Okay. So as you watch in the video, you can see that I'm applying it on uh, fairly heavily. What's also very important is to use a paint stick. And you want to use the flat of the stick. Don't use the edge. What you're trying to do is just to get that paint worked into the resin and don't overwork it. Just run your stick across there a few times, get that paint worked into the resin, and let it do its thing. Um, it's amazing how it develops the longer that it sets. <clears throat> Now with this technique, you can wait about 15 minutes for the resin to start to set up a little bit. So, <clears throat> so that technique stays in place. Personally, I like to do it when the resin is still very fluid because I like to see those veins that I created. I like to see those move. I like to see those open up. So if you're just running one of those chamber effect veins in your project, um, you may want to wait a little bit for it to set up, or if you want it to open up a little bit more, um, do it early. So experiment with it, uh, but it's an, it's an absolutely awesome technique and gives incredible results. See how much paint that I'm adding on to there? And then watch here as I'm using the flat of the stick. So when I'm going one direction, I have it tilted just a little bit, and then going the other direction, I tilt it the opposite. So I'm just trying to get those... Uh, paints um, into the resin <clears throat> and I'm doing small areas at a time because I, I don't want that paint to have a chance to dry and so um, I, I put down an area I work it and then I move on to the next area so I'm going to speed this up here um, so oh let me make another note see when I sprayed on that khaki. Um, what I like to do is not necessarily run that spray paint all the way from one end to the other, especially with that khaki, which is kind of a highlight. 
um, because I just want it to show up in some areas. That kind of eliminates that tiger stripe or that uh, candy cane effect, if you will. So just work that in. Let it develop because it doesn't look like much there, but take a look at what the end result is. So allowing that technique to develop, giving it some time to develop, provides some outstanding results. So I'm gonna speed things up here a little bit, um, but I want you to continue to watch how I'm applying the paint, um, the amount that I'm putting down, and then how I'm working that in with my stir stick. Um, and you'll see that there's, there's times where I'm, I'm putting that spray paint directly over the white because I want that white to come up from the bottom. I don't want that white to be on top. Um, I'm also trying to make sure that I'm getting that sprayed down. You'll see some areas that don't have any spray paint at all. That's kind of um, some uh, negative space, if you will. But again, because I fogged the board, that clear coat that's on there is allowing those colors that I fogged the board with to come up through also. So there's actually quite a few layers of color. So Wow, it's just amazing the results that you get and being patient and allowing this technique to develop. It's absolutely amazing. So here at the end, I am going to show you the final result again after applying the uh, Ultimate Top Coat uh, Natural Finish. So here's what the finished product looks like after I've applied the Ultimate Top Coat in the matte finish, <clears throat> except for the cabinetry. But again, the importance of once you use your stick to um, get those spray paints into the resin, just walk away and let it set, let it develop. You can still work it if you've got an area that you want to change or you want to add some more spray paint to. Um, also, I don't want to add a lot of heat. Uh, I don't want to torch it too much because I don't want it to move much more than it already has. And I certainly don't want to lose uh, the effects that I've already gotten. But you can see the cells that have developed. That's because of the spray paints, um, the propellant that's in the hammered paints. And then you'll also see just some areas where that khaki is showing through the colors. Um, I didn't add a lot. I just wanted some highlights. I just wanted some accents. <clears throat> what I also did was I used some of the fast drying uh, bright silver metallic just to add in some accents to help tie in with uh, the customer's chrome sink. The rock edge looks absolutely amazing. Uh, the rock edge on the countertop, also the rock edge on the contoured backsplash, really, really turned out nice. So I was very pleased with this project of, of how it ended up. The Chambers effect is absolutely amazing. Alan Chambers is the one that developed this. Um, again, these are shots after the ultimate top cut was applied and after I got the piece installed. Really, really turned out nice. Uh, thank you all for watching. Please click the subscribe button, if you will, uh, to be alerted for upcoming videos. And <clears throat> if you have any questions, let me know. Give it a try. Thanks again.